We're talking Gaelic games here on Highland Radio and looking forward to the weekend's action. Uh, Club-wise, there's a, a massive standout tie that's not involving any Northwest sides, uh, but Kilku, the down champions, are taking on the Derry, Derry Gonley from Fermanagh. Uh, in the Ulster Club Senior Decider this coming weekend. Look ahead to that game. I'm joined by uh, Ulster GA journalist Declan Bogue. Declan, good to see you. Same to you, Ashin. Thank you. Uh, well, Declan, I suppose I'm going to use the pun. Is it the best two club teams in Ulster that are going to fight out this decider at the weekend? Uh, good question. Um, there's so many good teams in Ulster. There's so many teams now that see themselves almost as quasi-county teams. Um, so... You know, if we're, if we're talking like that, then others might feel, uh, you know, they might feel stung by a description like that. But for consistency, right? Okay, like you know, since really, I suppose Cross now are wavering big time. Uh, I think the Guidor defeat to them, uh, their de- their defeat to Guidor in in twenty eighteen wasn't Noma was nearly a little bit of a, a, a nail in the coffin of that cross and they have to come away and reinvent themselves. So you've got Derek Onley, who I, I don't remember the exact scoreline, Oshin, but they played, like, you know, don't forget, like, what since 2015, they've won every Fermanagh Championship apart from last year. Well, sorry, 2020, which was to Adonis St. Joseph's. Uh, and there was no Ulster club then. But in every year since 2015, they've been in there. And I remember their first game there. They played Slot Neil up in Owen Beg. And I think it was somewhere in the region of 16 points. Like, you know, it was a hammer. And I think, it, I think Slot Neil scored 4 13 that day. Uh, the following year, they came back because, like, that 2015 game was very much man to man. Following year, they came back with a completely different uh, defensive structure and they kept the margin to five points. And they've just improved and improved and improved. Like, you know, in the last two Ulster clubs, they've knocked out Tyrone teams, which has really stung uh, some people in Tyrone because they would always feel that their their championship is the best championship in all of Ulster. I, just, I don't know about that. I think it's the most exciting, without a doubt, most unpredictable. Um, but whoever emerges from it, you know, there's a school of thought that they, they haven't been tested or, they, or they've been tested too much, sorry, to, in order to actually get out of Tyrone. Um, you can kind of... Look on the flip side of that and say, well, Derry Gonley, you know, they, they managed to always time their run or something like that. But that's not the, I don't believe that's the case because this year they're taking to two replays. Um, they had to, they had to get a replay to get over Adderney in a repeat of the county final. And they had, they're brought to a replay by Canali, who are a, a common team there in Fermanagh. Kilku speak for themselves. They're the reigning Ulster champions. Uh, while they might have only won Ulster title, they were still about there for a long number of years, and that goes back, precedes um, Derry Gonley. They got the, the final, I think, in 2013 against Cross. Uh, and I think that one went to extra time. So they have been there ploughing, uh, doing an awful lot, putting an awful lot in, having serious coaches. Uh, and, you know, they would see, Derry Gonley would see themselves as a sort of a mirror image, like, you know, that. You know, they had no real tradition up until ninety five. They won the first championship. They won one then in, in two thousand and five. They won one in two thousand and nine, and then they're on this major run. And I suppose it's not that they need to strike now when they're hot. They have their team keeps changing. Uh, much like Kilku, they're a completely different outfit than they were in twenty fifteen. In the way that Kilku are completely different than when. They had uh, some of their players that have gone on and retired. Yeah, Marty Keane and all those kind of guys. Like you know, they're been and gone. So, are the two best teams? Uh, short answer. After having brought you around the houses, I think they are. Uh, and um, I think it's in. We're in for a bit of a. I don't know if we're in for a clinker because if you look at the Glen, uh, Kilku game, it was just people would say that was the two best teams. But um, and it was decided really from a, a short kick out gone wrong, and before you know it, like you know, uh, the ball was in the net. Jerome Johnson scored the goal. Uh, but that game was kind of oh Jesus! It dep- It goes back to what your philosophy is in football. Do you enjoy open stuff and a lot of scores? You weren't getting it that day, but what you got was this incredibly tactical encounter where I looked upon. It it was almost better for you not to have the ball because the moment that you had the ball, you crossed the line, the opposition got their, their formation, their defensive formation in place. 
very, very difficult to break down. But the moment that you overturned, you turned the ball over, then you had a chance. And if you could break fast enough, then you might get the score at the end of it. Like, you know, um, so we're in for a battle um, whether it will be the traditional wonderful open football or not, I don't think so. But, uh, you know, you can't deny the two teams are in the final. Yeah, uh, two points separated the sides when they met a couple of years ago at the semi-final stage, Declan. Mm-hmm. So we're going to expect there hasn't been much change in the in, in the last couple of years, uh, squad-wise for the for those two teams. So we're expecting much of the same. Um, it could be a very low-scoring encounter. Um, Kill coup maybe going into this one as favourites, given the fact that they beat Glen, Declan. Yeah. Fair to say. Yeah, and they have that experience of. Being the defending champions, they have more experience yeah. than Derry Donnelly. And um, being quite frank, like very few Fermanagh teams ever find themselves being labelled or tipped up as favourites. And that won't concern Derry Donnelly. They'll be happy enough. I think that in general, within teams, that never bothers anybody. Uh, it, it, like, you know, uh, this is the first time that a Fermanagh team have been in the Ulster Club final since the Gales, and the Gales were in. 2002 uh, and before that they were in the final in 99 so no it won't bother them uh, but it's probably fair I and yeah. but at the same time Derry Gonley will look at well hold on here you know Dromore were heavy favourites here in the first game and we took that to extra time we won that and uh, I'm not sure who was being tipped against Clan Iron probably Harps all right but um, no it, it, yeah look it's a label that people put on it and that's all it is yeah, then they score three early goals in that game against Clan Iron. There they were right? immense yeah. in that first quarter. Like yeah, they were yeah, absolutely yeah. brilliant. Can, can they do the same against Kilku? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, because Kilku are just too too sharp, too yeah. too clever defensively, and uh, for as good as Clan Iron are, there was a serious rawness coming. Like you know, their first title in in decades and so on. Like and you know, a. Uh, as Derry they found out in 2015, Ulster Club can be very punishing. Sure enough, they made a comeback after Steve McGullion was sent off, but uh, they just left themselves too much to do at that point. But I don't see that happening against okay. Kilku have too many good markers at the back. Uh, they're too organised. They they just wouldn't be hit. For, they, they, they never have been hit okay. for quick goals in succession, and it just won't happen again on Sunday. What, what do you have to do then to beat Kilku? Good question, Ashin Cheapers. Um, and I suppose I'm you know, you to it here, so <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I'm just trying to think back to when they were beaten, like and what happened to them. But um, I just think you have to hang in with them. Uh, mm. Even at that, you know, Kilku are damn good. Like you know, they don't tend to blitz teams. Like even their their championship and down against. Uh, hopefully, I'm not getting the names wrong, but I think they played. Um, Oh, we call the team uh, up in uh, do, 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 with the Guinness Brothers and Castle do, 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 or, or Castle, not Castle Well. Uh, it'll come back to me, but like you know, even I think they played Warren Point. That was a tight one. Burren was a tight one in the final. Uh, you know, they don't, they, they don't. They're a bit like Stott Neil were like you know half a decade ago, where right, they're winning games by one or two points. I, I think maybe. If a team are that way structured, we always say if you get a good run on them, if they get a good first half, uh, I've looked at conditions and the conditions are pretty mild. So it won't be that like they're facing into a, a, a big wind in either half. But if you get up on them with three points by half time, then Kilku are going to have to come out and they're going to have to go a wee bit more man for man. Uh, and that might that might be the plan. I do know Derry Gonley and looking at them this year, there's an evolution of their style. And Shane Ward, um, who'd be familiar to your listeners, like with his work with Donegal Miners and uh, Aid Rua, uh, he has them playing a big high press whereby, you know, I remember at one stage in the county final in Fermanagh, Ennis Gillen you know, simply couldn't get over the halfway line. They couldn't manage it because Derry Gonley are big, big units. Uh, and Kilku maybe aren't just don't match up that way physically to them. So I think if they can just push hard uh, and try and keep Kilku fenced into their own half, that might be the way they'll go. Yeah. Well, Kilku, as we said, are our favourites for this one. If they were to come through it, our Kilku uh, maybe 
and a better posi- a better positioned team to represent Ulster and challenging for an All Ireland club title. I I don't know I don't know um I just funny I just was looking at Gaelic life this morning and uh, Kevin Casty was was talking about this very thing and he says first Ulster then Ireland is is, is the headline on this uh, on his pace and he kind of thinks that um, whoever will come out uh, will be a serious representative for Ulster. And I mean, it all depends on the other teams that emerge from the from the provinces. Like Pierce's are a defensive, doughty kind of outfit. Like really, what you're getting into at this stage anyway is there's no duds, there's no gimmies, there's nothing like that. Like you know, Kilmacud would be very focused. Like on what after what happened against Monolata in the TLN when 2018, uh, they'll be desperate to win an All Ireland club with this team, just with sort of age profile and so on. So. Look, when you get to that stage, like Cora Finn's no longer a proposition they were. Like they're they're obviously gone. We've got Pierces from Roscommon and uh, you've got Kill McCod coming out of there. So look at it all depends on how they match up then after that. Yeah. Um okay then let's go to the Mechanic Cup and we'll sort of stay in a for mana theme. Uh, they're taking on Derry on Sunday. Derry need to win by six points. Um if they're to top that section C ahead of Monaghan and secure a semi final spot. Would you be confident that Rory Gallagher's side can do that or can Fermanagh put it up to them? I don't think Fermanagh will put it up to them. I think that Derry will get at least six points. And I say that for a number of different reasons. They played Derry last year and um, they, they they played Derry up in Owen Beg last year and Derry gave them, they ran straight through them. Um, I know that the I haven't spoken to people that were there for Derry Monaghan. The first game that Derry were, uh, like Monaghan players who, who weren't actually playing then on, on Sunday against Fermanagh said to me, look, this team were absolutely flying. Like, you know, they weren't even at McKenna Cup pace. They, weren't, they, were, they were more or less like at the beginning of championship pace. Like they're they're extremely motivated. Um, they've got a, a massive year ahead of them, like in terms of their development, and they just want to get them to Division One. That's feeding down into their approach. Now, fair enough, they couldn't shake off Monaghan. They'll be extremely uh, disappointed with that for, for having drawn 12 each last Friday. Um, I think that the Fermanagh team, by Kieran Donnelly's admission, the new manager, uh, there's been a few evenings there where there's only been about 15 training because of COVID. He said the team that played there in Monaghan literally all had COVID over the autumn and winter and like they're only really recovering. He was impressed with their stamina. Having said that, he only used one substitution. Um, you're allowed unlimited substitutions in the Mechanic Cup, as you know. Like, I mean, how many did Donegal have? Nine, wasn't it, the other night? Yeah. 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 Uh, so, like, the only substitution was Larkham McStraffy was taken off for Brandon Horn in the 44th minute for Fermanagh. And people would be quizzing that. But uh, maybe there's a reason behind it. Maybe the high levels of COVID in the squad. But it also feeds down into the level of training they've been able to do, uh, all the preparation. So, look, I just, no, I, just, I, I see Derry as, as winning that. I do like the fact that it's in Rochelet. I think that's just a wee thing that might just just annoy a few people, like, yeah. you know, taking it to the far end of the county and so on. But, um, but like, it's like everything else. It's, it's a club that have gone out very ambitiously and went and got themselves a second pitch and a stand and all the rest. And sometimes you see counties rewarding clubs like that and bringing a McKenna Cup fixture. It used to be the National League was spread around the grounds too, Ashim. Uh, you remember that, like, you know, that 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 is largely by, I think there was a, a more or less a, an informal rule that, you know, you basically host uh, your your league, National League games in, in grounds that are fit to do it. I know you are blessed in Donegal. You're able to go to Bally Shannon, Ladder Kenny, uh, and Bally Buffet. Um, but that's in Fermanagh, more or less. It all takes place in Brewster Park. But um, but no, look, anyway, Derry will get through there, I should imagine. Okay. Speaking of sides travelling, uh, Donegal are off to Port Glen Owen. Uh, looking at Google Maps, I've never been in it in my life, Declan, but it seems to be yeah. a fantastic pitch and have a fantastic surface. And yeah. And that's ju- just about it. So it is. But uh, Antrim is the opposition. Pulled off a, a bit of a shock beating down uh, during the week in, in the other group game. Um, Declan Boner's expecting maybe three or four of his regulars back into the to the lineup, which means they'll be feeling the stronger side than last week. But you would expect Donegal to come out with a comfortable victory? I don't know. Um, 
Uh, do you have any inclination? Like, is is, is Michael Murphy going to be fit? Is Ryan Mike, McHugh- Mike, well, Michael Murphy's not going to be there. Ryan McHugh's not going to be there. Uh, yes. Maybe the, the likes of uh, Jimmy Brennan is, is going to come back into the fold. But there is, Declan has that. said that there is two or three of the regulars that, that will be back. But it, it's outside the, the, the remit of, of Michael Murphy and, and Ryan McHugh just yet. They're going to be more returning in the league and probably in the latter part of the league, uh, quite possibly, Declan, before we see the likes of Michael Murphy again. Um, right. But it is going by, uh, well, what, what Declan is saying, it's going to be a stronger side. And I would say it absolutely will be and all the rest. But, uh, and there's Neil McGee, there's been no announcement of a retirement there. Or anything like no that. announcement of a retirement, but Neil, yeah. Neil is part of the fold. And don't right. be surprised if... if okay, if well then, what's, in uh, we'll, we'll qualify it all with, yes, there may be more regulars, and Jimmy McBrennan is absolutely a big help to anyone. Uh, he's, he's an excellent player, of course, but... I just think that Donegal, the the tick because of Ray McHugh and, and Michael, uh, you cast your mind back to a couple of years ago where they played, was it Kerry in a back door in a, in a Super 8s game? Uh, yeah. Or was it like... I thought it Croke Park. It was in Croke Park. And like, you know, it, my, yeah. my impression of that game was that it was basically Ray McHugh and, and Michael Murphy against Kerry. They played them by themselves almost like, you know, and any of the big moments that Donegal have it's normally those two guys involved and like, you know, the lack of big games, say for example, in, in 2020 when they played Tyrone up in Bible Fair in that real rotten night, like a Sean Patton back. That's another huge, huge one. Uh, you know, it was Neil McGee completely, Conor McKenna came into that game as, you know, he was getting all the plaudits because he had, he had put together two incredible performances, especially the one down Castle Bar against Mayo. And Neil McKee just completely wrapped him up for the first half. And while well, Neil had to go off injured at half time, the damage was nearly done on, on Connor at that point. Uh, so, and looking at Antrim and the McGinley, Stevie O'Neill, Sean Kelly are very ambitious for this group of players. They got their year under their belt. They're in a much better position, knowing what they're where they're at now. Port Glenone is one of those places that is sort of in the look. You know, people are going to Belfast people might object, but you know the Southwest Antrim area is a huge football area, always was, uh, and that's sort of like that might bring a big old crowd there to Port Glenone. Um, and while you know Donegal will obviously have the reputation, all that you look, you you remember Friday night. For me, the best player in the pitch was Tony McLennan, but uh, not taking any way, anything away from his performance as goal. But that was Rory Burns, the downkeeper, kicked about three kickouts in a row, which he just gobbled up like consecutively, which caught the eye. Um, I think that's going to be tight. I think that is going to be very tight. I, I, I don't see a comfortable win for Donegal. I, I would imagine there'll be two points, three points max in that one. Not and it could go either way, either like you know, because Antrim could be very motivated to take having tucked the scalp at Donegal or down as they would see it. Uh, they would be mad keen to do something against Donegal team. Hopefully, it gets a good crowd. Hopefully, we get a good game, and hopefully, it's not raining, Declan. Because going by Google Maps, there's not even a stand in, in Port Glenowen, so there's not. But uh, the yeah, actual well, playing surface, kind of thing. yeah, look, it, look, it looks top class. What so does the playing surface? Well, we'll see, we'll see how it goes this weekend. By the way, there's live commentary of that game on Highland on our website, uh, highlandradio.com, from the 1 30 throwing on Saturday. Also, on Saturday, Tyrone against Armagh. Uh, Tyrone just starting to find um, their feet again after after the holiday. Uh, heavy defeat against Cavan. Um, a lot were predicting that Cavan would win it, given that Tyrone were only back a couple of days and they'd be feeling a totally different change side. But did you expect a 15-point hammering, Declan? No, I don't think anyone would ever expect that because even in the past, Tyrone have always put that huge store in McKenna Cup and having said that, all team holidays would have been well before it, like, you know, and done and dusted in, in, in October, November, even early December, like team holidays were done and dusted, uh, putting boys out to play 48 hours after you landed um, is a very difficult ask. Another thing is about that, uh, you know, Hart always, like obviously Mickey Hart's record in the McKenna Cup was sensational, but he always said, um, there was an interesting thing about that is you cannot put lads in for their debut unless they have experience around that and in each lane Hart would only really make a tweak in each lane so I mean you know you had a midfielder um, 
uh, God forgive me, I can't remember, but Joe Goose was making his debut in midfield. A uh, young lad, just out of his teens from Argyll Cairn. Like, you know, that's a big ass then coming up against seasoned players and Calvin at their seasoned outfit. Uh, you had other players there for sure, but like they, they, they had a lot of sort of two or three changes in each lane. And um, it's very hard. It's very hard to get them. Um, it's very hard to get a wee bit of traction like that when you're just suffering. Like, and you know, Matty Donnelly, you know, you've no sort of, um, you know, just they're just missing too many to be taken seriously, you know, for that game. And I think that no one, uh, Logan and Doher, they'll be balling with that. Like, they'll not be happy with that result whatsoever because they just don't like to see uh, Tyrone beaten by that sort of margin. Um, so I can see them putting out a seriously strong team. I can see a lot of harsh words being said this week. Like, I can see a lot of boys being told, right, it all ends now. The 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 fluffy stuff around winning and all Aaron, that's all over. Like they I've got to hand it to Tyrone. They partied and they spoke and they shared seek not secrets, but they shared their experience better than we have seen a team doing for many, many years. Uh you know, when the dubs won it, there would be a few different interviews here and there, but they would have been very picky because like they had such a flipping officious manner about them in terms of you know media engagement but the throne panel all spoke brilliantly about their journey uh i i thought it was magnificent because then it could sort of put a public face in that team that had been missing for so long but i would say now uh after that game it'll be the the the, the shutters we pull down on this team and we're gonna see a different outfit yeah so Armagh's gonna expect the wrath of tyrone then come saturday afternoon I still think that our mom might might get something out of this. Like you know, they, you know, they they're always keen. Like it wouldn't matter what time of year they play Tyrone, like they'll be looking to take chunks out of them. Um, and they just, you know, they they don't, they never have a challenge game or a friendly game against Tyrone. It's gonna be skin and hair flying. Uh, it'll be an interesting one for anyone to go along to see. All right, but um, like even certain things going on in Armagh this year. Like you saw Jarlath Burns played the Ulster uh, quarter final in Hurling for his club Camlock and scored two goals from midfield. <laughs> and maybe he maybe he played too well because then he was missing for the Ulster semi final and the final and he obviously didn't play the twinning uh, game there that they lost against Fulham Gales over in Burring at the weekend. So I would say there's a lot of uh, back to brass tax for them too. Yeah. Listen, Declan, as always, it's good to see you and uh, good to talk to you. Enjoy you enjoy the ball at the weekend. Final shout on Kilku, Derry Gonley. Who are you going for? Derry Gonley. Just Derry because Gonley. I didn't see it happen. I'd just like to see a, a senior Ulster club coming back to Fermanagh for the first time. Um, I think it would do marvels for a... I think it would do wonders for, for, the, for the image, for, for the esteem of uh, club football in that county. Um, and but it wouldn't. I, I I would like to see that, but I mean, sort of heart ruling head kind of job. But you know, if you're looking at purely football experience, all the rest, you'd probably be tipping Kilku. Anyone sense would be tipping tipping Kilku, but uh, I might just stick my neck out here. Okay, you're saying you're not sensible then, Declan. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Enjoy the ball. All right, Ashley. Thank you. Good luck. Bye bye.